Hey everybody, Freddy here with another video. This time we're going to be talking about Azure Active Sync. We're going to be talking about how to synchronize an on-prem Active Directory to Azure Active Directory. We're going to be focusing primarily on the security aspect of things. When do you need a global admin? When you don't need a global admin? How do you remove the permissions and make sure that that configuration continues to synchronize? I want to make sure that by the end of this video, you know this and you can set it up correctly and securely. So I hope you enjoy this video. Let's get to it. Okay, let's get some of the terminology out of the way. What is the Azure Active Sync? Well, it is used to synchronize an on-prem Active Directory to Azure AD, also known as AAD. Too many A's there. Um, so in this case, for our demo, I'm going to be using botanservices.local, which is the on-prem domain. And I'm going to be synchronizing that to botanservices.com, which is the Azure AD. So the one on the left-hand side is the on-prem. The one on the right-hand side is the Azure or the Cloud AD. So some of the accounts that we're going to need for the preparation is we need three accounts. Um, one of them is the AD Sync service account. That one is used to run the sync service on the local service, excuse me, on the local server. And it's also used to access the SQL database. Um, you can use an external SQL server. If you don't have an external SQL server, don't worry. You can just install the agent. The agent will install its own database if it's a small Active Directory, that's not a problem. If you're looking at an enterprise, then you might have to implement a SQL solution. However, for the demo, I'm just going to use the local database, so I'm not going to be installing a SQL server. We also need an ADDS, so AD means Active Directory, DS Directory Service, so ADDS Connector Account. That one is to read and write information from the on-premises -prem AD and that's how it's going to read the data and it's going to push it to Active Directory in the cloud. Then the third account we're going to use is the Azure AD Connector account. That one is used to write information into the Azure AD. So those are the three accounts that we're going to need and I'm going to go through it so you need so you don't have to um, you know figure out where they come from. So again we're going to need a local admin account on the server and that one is because we need to install an agent on the server. Again, for this server, it can be an existing Active Directory domain controller, or you can install a new server, brand new member server that is joined to the Active Directory, and you can install the agent there, and that can also work as that agent. It's your choice. I'm going to install a brand new server, so you're going to see that um, in this demo. Then we're going to need an ADDS Enterprise Admin Account. And that one is um, just to write and read and write the information from the on-prem AD. It, it, it's used to create the account that is going to set this thing up. Uh, you're not going to use it all the time. Again, this is only for the installation of this system. And then you're also going to need an Azure AD Global Admin Account you're not going to leave it running. This is just an act, a global admin account that is used to create the Azure AD connector account in Azure AD. After that, you can remove the admin globe, excuse me, the global admin privileges, and I'll show you how to do that. It is not recommend. You can delete the account, but it's not recommended that you delete it just in case you need to reinstall it. You need to make changes to to this configuration, it's better to leave that account in the Azure AD. However, don't leave it with global admin permissions. And I will show you how as well. So those are the, the, the things that we're going to, as far as the accounts that we need, I'm going to go through this in the demo. Okay, so let's start with the demo here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create three accounts, as I mentioned before. We need three accounts. We need a local admin account. And the reason we need this account is because we need it to install the agent on the server. And this is the server that I'm going to be using here. Then I, I also need an enterprise admin account. It doesn't need to be the same account. I just need to have access to one because that's the one that is going to create the connection to Azure. 
And I also need access to an Azure Global Admin account because that's the one that is going to create the account in Azure as well. So oh, those are the three accounts that I need. So the first thing is I'm going to do is I'm going to create a local admin account. Um, so I'm just going to call it local admin. So local admin and local admin and create a password. Okay, now that all of our accounts are created, we are going to go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to download uh, the agent. I don't think I have it yet. So let's download the agent. Uh, Microsoft Azure Active Directory Connect Download. So I am logged in as administrator at the moment, but if you were not logged in as a, as a local administrator, you would log in as a local administrator so you can install the agent. So for me, I'm just going to execute it. So here is the, the option that you have. You can use express settings. If you have, ex, if you have only one single Active Directory for us, then you will just automatically, it, it'll automatically synchronize for you. Configure synchronization of identities in the current AD for us for both on services. It'll configure password hash synchronization from on premise to Azure AD, which means that it's going to take the passwords up to the cloud so that you can authenticate local users using Azure AD. Um, and it's and it will start the initial synchronization and synchronize all attributes and it will enable auto upgrade. So what I have here, just so that so that you can see, I have I have a couple organizational units. I have EMEA, which an EU admin. I have APAC, which Asia admin, and America with US admin. Uh, these are the the. The users that I have here, I could have a lot more, but I'm just showing you the ones that I have, EMEA, APAC, US admin, APAC, Asia admin, and um, US and EMEA admin as well. So what we're gonna see is we're gonna see these users being synchronized to the, to the Active Directory. So as you can see here, I'm showing you what users I have. I have the admin that I created, the sync admin, I have a few F2 bonds. So keep that in mind. So when we do the synchronization, you're going to see more users. Again, we're going to keep track of this. Right now, we have six users. Let's move on. OK, so we are going to do an um, express settings. So we're going to say use express settings, and it's going to install the required components. As it's doing this, the next thing it's going to do is it's going to ask us for uh, this the, the accounts. So enter your Azure AD global administrator or hybrid identity administration credential. So again, this is the Azure AD global admin account. So I'm going to use the sync-admin at botonservices.com and enter my password. Again, this is this account here that I created. Actually, it's GA, sorry. G A. Connecting to Microsoft Online. This is the reason why I said disable the Internet Explorer 
enhanced security just because this is going to ask us for a lot of questions if we don't if we have it enabled so let's go ahead and do it. Since it's a new account, it's going to ask us to update the password. Uh, we're going to skip this for 14 days. That's to add MFA or the multi-factor authentication. All right. Now it says enter the Active Directory Domain Services Enterprise Admin Credentials. Now this is this here that we created again you don't need to create a new one you can use an existing one i created one so that it's separate than the one i use normally so ent admin at botan services dot local okay so it's telling me that the use on premises credentials should match the ones on the verified. Again, this one is because my domain, my local domain is called Botan services.local and my Azure Active Directory is called Botan services.com. So it's telling me that the UPNs don't match, which says, okay, fine, continue without matching all UPN. And I'm gonna say next. And install and it says start synchronization process when the configuration completes and that's fine I want to see that configuration taking place again so what it's doing is it's creating a, a local SQL instance because I'm not using a SQL server uh, so it's creating a local SQL instance to do the synchronization um, if you have a, a big Enterprise, you might have to use a separate SQL server, but in this case, this is a small operation, so I'm just using a, a local, a local instance. So I'm going to speed up the video a little bit just so that we can, you know, t we can see this working. Okay, the configuration is complete. Now you can log into the Azure or Office 365 portal to verify that the user accounts from your local directory have been created. So let's go ahead and look at the users. We're back at this um, Azure Active Directory. Let's do a refresh. And we see a new account, on-premises directory synchronization account. Again, this process created um, an account, and this is the reason why we needed that global admin account. This is the account. Nothing has been replicated yet, but there it is. It's starting to come in. Asia admin, ENT admin, EU admin, and where is US admin? Here's US admin. So, so all of the accounts are synchronizing over to the Active Directory. What I want you to pay attention is this account on premises directory synchronization service account. This is the account that is going to be used to do the synchronization between the two, um, the two systems. But once the synchronization takes place, once it's done, you, you can remove the global admin account. And I will show you how that works in a minute. Um, but the synchronization is working. Everything is working. If I, if I go back here and I go under my America and I create a new user. Okay, new user. Uh, the question is how long until I see that user in my Active Directory? The answer to that is typically about 30 minutes uh, when you have this enabled. So let's go ahead and do a refresh. And we're not gonna see that until about 30 minutes from now. The reason is because it, it, the synchronization is every 30 minutes when you have the agent installed. Now there's another thing that you can use, which is the cloud sync. The cloud sync is much faster. Uh, it doesn't give you all the capabilities that the agent does. However, it synchronizes faster and you can use both at the same time. And that 
that synchronization would be faster if you do it that way. I'm just going to leave it at this for now because this is mainly focusing on the accounts and the way that the synchronization takes place. I will pause the video and come back once that synchronization, synchronization takes place. Okay, so I just clicked on the refresh button and I see the new user here. It's about 10.10. 10. Uh, we started the synchronization. We created the user at 9.40, 9.41. So right now it's 10.10. 10. So at this point, you can see that it, it does take about 30 minutes. Another thing that we can do is we can go to the Azure AD Connect. Um, if you don't have it in your quick, we can you can just search for AD Connect. And here you can see that it says that the last sync was less than one hour ago. It says that it's enabled. Everything looks good. There's also the health and analytics. We can click on Azure AD Connect Health. This one will tell us any information as far as sync errors, any duplicate users, data mismatch, things like that. Anything that may be happening with the, with the, with the AD Connect. So at this point, everything looks okay. Again, if you look at here, it says that it's enabled less than one hour ago. So going back to this account here, the Azure Global Admin account that we created, what I, uh, what I want to show you is, let me, put this here okay what I want to show you is that this account does not need to continue to be an admin account so let's go ahead and go to our active directory let's go to users and let's look at the ENT admin that we created actually no that's the local one we created sync admin uh, where are you sync admin here it is this admin this sync admin account is the one that we created and it is a global admin account at this point. It is recommended that you remove that from this account. So look at the assigned roles. It says that is a global administrator. We can click on this and we can click remove assignment. Yes. Now it's not a global administrator anymore. Uh, it's not recommended that you delete it just in case you need to read, uh, install the agent, or if you need to do something with the agent, you can always come back, assign the role again, and you can make changes to the agent. However, by doing this, you're gonna prevent this account from being a global admin account. You don't need to have it as a global admin account, and it is not recommended that you leave it as a global admin account. So remove the role, you can leave the account, but remove the role. Even though we remove that, um, that global admin role from this, we can still create users. So I'm gonna create a new user, and finish so we're going to create an after account um, again it's going to take another 30 minutes for that user to synchronize right now we see 13 users i'm going to pause the video and i'm going to come back to show you that the synchronization still works because it's using this account it's not using the global admin account that we use to create this connection so i'll pause the video come back in 30 minutes and show you the results okay after 30 minutes we see that there is an after account here that was synchronized. Synchronization is still taking place. Synchronization is working. Nothing has um, failed at this point. So now we don't have a, a global admin account that is, um, that is just lingering there. So now that's the way that you would set it up. You would remove the role after you connect and that way you can keep your system protected. You don't want to leave unwanted or unused global admin accounts just lingering because those can be compromised. And then, you know, once somebody gets access to your environment as a global admin, then they pretty much have access to everything. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. As you can see, the security is very important. I think it's one of the most important things when you configure this service. Um, so. Please leave any comments in the section down below. If you have any questions, please feel free to post them there as well. If you have any ideas of any videos that you would like to see in the future, also let me know. I had a lot of fun doing this and I hope that you enjoyed it and that you learned something. And if you like this video and you found value, please click the like button and also subscribe to the channel. Thank you and until next time, take care.